you guys. It's been a while. I think the last time you heard from me properly was probably a year and a half ago, and I was going to Norway. That was a really good trip for me. I took it after finishing A-levels and after the pandemic and everything. Uh, I did a lot of hiking. I did quite a bit of filming, but nothing really came from it. I then came home and I started working at a local outdoors company during the spring and summer. That was a brilliant experience for me. And then I was accepted into Minerva University. I traveled to San Francisco. I spent four months studying abroad. And now I'm back home and I'm learning to ride a motorbike. So a lot has happened and I have a lot of stories to tell, a lot of things to explain. But to be honest, last few months, the beginning of the year has been a little bit overwhelming, a little bit uh, of uncertainty. And so in the spirit of adventure, I'm gonna set out on what always helps me reset my mind. And it's a camping trip to Dartmoor, but this time on a motorbike. It's good to be uploading again. Uh, I think I should sit that way if I want to ride the motorbikes. motorbike with a camera like this is much more difficult than back when I used to cycle around. Alright, I have made it. I'm at Shipley Bridge on the southeast side of Dartmoor. Uh, I have to do a bit of hiking with my bags. I have two bags, but it shouldn't be an issue. A little bit of hiking so that I can get to a place on the moor where I'm allowed to camp. I'm not allowed to camp here. There's actually been a whole issue with wild camping in England and specifically Dartmoor because one of the landowners, a wealthy wealthy landowner won a high court case against uh, people's right to roam um, and it's been appealed and there's all these sort of things but it's limited the the amount of wild camping you can do I'm allowed to camp further up in the moor but I'm gonna have to hike there which is a bit tricky with all my with all my gear and that uh, motorbike trip was beautiful it was amazing although it was my first time having people pull out in front of me and uh, almost, you know, causing a crash. So that was a bit scary, it happened twice. I think if you want to live in Cornwall, if you want to live in Devon, if you want to live in this part of the world, this is the place to be. The towns are so nice. All right, I will start packing up my bags, doing it properly. I have half a bag empty still and uh, yeah, I also moved my bike so it's not in the way. All right, just before I start hiking, I've seen this amazing, beautiful tree and I really want to have a look at it up close. So let's go check it out. See the old lichen on it? It's, oh my gosh, so pretty. 
color is my shirt? <laughs> I think it's a hawthorn tree. All right, time to start hiking. Goodbye, spider. Uh, spider's my my motorbike. That's what I called it. All right, let's go. It is very beautiful. This river is gorgeous. Wow. bike up here. It's a private road but I doubt anyone would actually know and I'm going to be leaving early anyway. This is Kemp. I've set it up right on top of a tour because I really want to get a good view in the morning. So I have basically a 360 view. The sun will set over that way. And we have a beautiful valley and then farmland and civilization. come down to the river to filter some water so I can drink it. Um, I set up camp at the top of a hill. It didn't take too long to get there and it wasn't that bad. But I think I'll probably hang around here for a little while and then uh, I'll, I'll have an early night. All right. I'm hiking back up to the tour. I uh, tried to go for a little swim in the river. It was very cold. Sun is set. I'm leaving the valley. Right where the river runs, there's a lot of green vegetation. And then as soon as you come up above the trees and where the river is, it's just a lot of dead ferns, actually. That's why it's all brown. It's not as windy as earlier. And look at my view. You can see the storm clouds. And there's a bit of a pink sky. Whatever this video is, documentary, vlog, anything, camping, exploration. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm gonna go to bed. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. It rained quite a bit last night. I think there's probably a couple more showers coming in. I can see the rain. And I can actually hear a cuckoo. A cuckoo bird down in the valley. I don't think I've heard one of those before. It's pretty cool. 
the only jacket I brought was my motorbike jacket, but it keeps out the wind very well, so it's still good. Alright, good morning. I woke up for sunrise and then I actually went back to sleep because I was very tired, but the sun has risen quite high now and I'm going to go on a hike. pretty scared of me. <laughs> They're running. Uh. If you've known my channel for a long time, then you'll know that when I was a bit younger, I was a big advocate for adventuring barefoot, and I still am. But in 2019, I had a foot injury uh, after running. Day 10 of running every single day. <sighs> and to make a long story short, I challenged myself to run every single day for a year, uh, but early on in the challenge, I landed on a stone, on a rock, in a pretty awkward position and did actually injure my foot. But it wasn't a bad injury, but because I continued to run every single day, it got worse and worse and worse until I had to end my challenge at day 29. And I was wearing a medical boot for it to heal up. And since then, I've been wearing normal shoes for recovery, but I have been wanting to get back into barefoot adventuring. So I actually reached out to Freet, which is a barefoot shoe company. It means freedom for feet, Freet. Um, and they've been super, super supportive of my channel and my videos over the last few years. And I want to say a big thank you to Sarah and Andrew for always supporting me. I really appreciate it. And I asked them if there's a shoe that they've made that would be good for hiking, and maybe also a bit of motorbiking as well, just because motorbike boots are pretty difficult to put on and take off all the time. And they recommended me the Freak Tundra and they actually sent this pair out to me, which is super nice. Um, and they're brilliant. It's everything that a barefoot shoe is. You can fold, fold it up completely. You can feel the ground beneath your, beneath your feet, but it offers a bit more protection. So it is a hiking boot. It gives you some ankle support. It is, water resistant, weatherproof, and the sole is a bit thicker, I think, but it still allows you to grip onto things with your toes and, and spread your toes out because the, the toe box is so large. I've actually been also using them for motorbiking on short trips, um, just because it is much, much easier than the boot, and it's really brilliant. So I just wanna say thank you for Freet for supporting the channel again. I haven't actually asked, but I'll, I'll ask Freet if they'd be interested in doing a discount code for viewers of the channel in case you guys are interested in looking at some really nice barefoot shoes. Um, there's a few companies on the market, but uh, I like to support Freet because they do really great work and the people there are amazing. Yeah, this isn't sponsored, they just sent me out the shoes and I just thought I'd talk about them because they are actually brilliant, I do love it. And it's so good to be adventuring in these types of shoes again. Because of my foot injury, I was using sort of normal shoes uh, for a while, thick soles and everything, uh, and I just didn't, once it healed up, I didn't really want to buy a new pair of shoes. Not as good as barefoot, but you actually do need support every now and again, so. And this used to be a whole valley, and now it's a dam, a reservoir. That is crazy. All right, I've had a nice adventure around. For those of you wondering, this is Avon Dam, or Avon River, and the dam and reservoir is just up there. Uh, I think I'm just gonna head back though now, and uh, get ready to start heading home. 